at Bridgestone. We're dedicated to the goal of optimizing tire performance for every customer we serve. We hope you'll share this goal. Reaching it means quality customer service and greater satisfaction for you and the customers we both serve. Bridgestone truck tires are manufactured to exacting standards and are designed for many miles of safe and economical life. By properly mounting and inspecting each tire, you can help get more trouble-free miles out of every tire you install. The first step is good housekeeping. The dirt, dust, and debris that you clean up can never find their way into your mounted tires to weaken their seals and cause problems down the road. So keep your work area clean and orderly. Proper mounting is your job. And any important job requires knowledge, training, experience, and dedication. Be certain that you're familiar with the safety procedures which you'll need to follow to do your job well. Review the Rubber Manufacturers Association wall charts and read the RMA Care and Service of Truck Tires brochure available in your shop or from the RMA. They're important tools to reinforce your training so that you're doing the job right the first time. Follow OSHA charts at every point, in every job, in every shop. These important rules are in place to protect you, so always follow them carefully. This video will focus on general areas related to tire mounting and does not attempt to provide instruction on the full procedure for tire mounting. During the next few minutes, we're going to look at several important aspects of quality tire mounts. The first is concentric bead seating. Concentric seating simply means that the wheel is centered inside the tire. Damaged or bent wheels, dirty wheels, damaged tires, improper cleaning, and incorrect lubrication are just a few of the things that can cause a tire not to be concentrically mounted on a wheel. Any of these problems can cause a ride disturbance and shorten tire life due to irregular wear. After you've properly mounted the tire, carefully inspect the tire assembly for concentricity. Visually check to make sure the tire's beads are fully seated and that the beads have slid all the way up the ramp of the rim. The bead seat should press tightly against the rim flange the spacing between the edge of the wheel and the molded sidewall rib now must be visually checked in at least six places, evenly spaced around the tire. Of course, it may not be practical to measure these six points with a ruler to confirm differences. If you can see a difference, the tire is mismounted. The beads are not fully seated. This can result in a ride disturbance and excessive or irregular wear. Here is an example of a mismounted tire. An easy way to remember what to do is clack. C is for clean, L is for lube, A is for align, and C is for check. We'll start with clean. Rust or debris caught in the space between the tire and the wheel can cause problems. Maybe the wheel wasn't properly clean before mounting. Always clean the wheels with a steel brush to remove dirt, scaling, or foreign matter. Spray any bare or exposed metal areas with anti-rust paint. If you find excessive rust and scaling, the wheels should be taken out of service. Consult your shop manager or wheel supplier. Some wheels can be refinished. Others may need to be scrapped. As you clean the wheel, check it for cracks or any other damage. Truck wheels take a beating, and curb scrapes or worksite hazards can weaken the wheel structure. Don't let any evidence of physical damage go unnoticed or unattended. Sometimes problems are caused when the wheel or tire has not been properly lubricated. It's important to lubricate every part of the wheel that will come in contact with the tire. Lubricate the bead seats as well as the area adjacent to the bead seats since the mounting process may rub off some of the lubricant. There are a variety of mounting lubricants available such as Fry Lube, Murphy's Soap, Ruglide, Bishman's and other vegetable based products. 
In addition, a lubricant that contains a rust inhibitor helps prevent rust and scale from developing on the flange and inside the wheel. A lubricant that protects the tire may also help keep the tire beads from becoming stuck to the wheels, avoiding the need for heavy tools when the beads need to be unseated as the tire is removed. Solvents and petroleum-based lubricants should never be used. Not only are they dangerous, but they'll also damage your tire. Always use a high-quality bead lubricant. It's also important for the inside of the tire to be completely free of foreign matter and for the tire beads to be properly lubed. After you've pulled the tire from stock, thoroughly inspect it. Look for dirt, moisture, or any debris and remove it with your clean shop cloth or vacuum it out with your shop vac. Always wipe the inside of the tire with a clean shop cloth to remove moisture. Any moisture left inside the tire over the life of the tire will break down and penetrate through the inner liner, attacking the steel cords, causing them to rust and be weakened. Perform a final thorough inspection. Be sure the inside of the tire is completely clean before you begin to lubricate the tire. You should lubricate both beads of the tire with a thin but thorough coat of lubricant. Be sure the lubricant coats from the bead toe to the guide rib of the tire surface. But do not allow the lubricant to puddle inside the tire. Remember, always use a high quality lubricant. The tire's beads are not properly seated when there's a difference in the distance between the rim flange and the concentric bead ring around the tire on either side. There's only one way to solve this problem. Remount the tire. Follow the proper steps to clean and re-lubricate the wheel and tire beads. Rotate the tire 180 degrees and reinflate. This is the only way to fix the problem. It will not fix itself in use. The beads must be seated correctly before the tire is put into service. When a tire is mismounted, the beads are not fully seated. It's clearly evident that the distance between the edge of the wheel and molded rib on the sidewall is not constant. When we look at this mismounted tire, we can see the obvious difference in the distance from the impression the rim left on the rubber to the concentric rib molded on the tire. We have shown you mini maxi wear. This can occur not only from mismounting, that is the beads are not concentric, but also from an ovalized rim. Irregular wear can come from many sources. Don't always assume the problem is the tire. The tire is only the messenger telling you there's a problem somewhere. For optimum uniformity, another important aspect of quality tire mounting is match mounting of the wheel and tire. To help you achieve good mounts, wheel and tire manufacturers place certain marks on many of your wheels and tires. Look for these markings on each tire you handle. Bridgestone tires may have red, yellow, white, or other colored marks. On steel wheels, you may find a dimple along the inside edge. Aluminum wheels, which are machined, do not have dimples. And not all steel wheels will have dimples. The age and condition of a wheel may even make it difficult to locate the dimple. The dimple represents the low point of the wheel at the time of manufacture. And you will line up this point with the red mark on the tire's sidewall, which represents the tire's high point, if the tire has a red mark. If the wheel has a dimple, use it during mounting. If it doesn't have a dimple, use the valve stem as your reference point. Some new original equipment Bridgestone tires will have a red mark or red dot on one sidewall, which indicates the high point of that individual tire is determined at the factory. This red dot should line up with the wheel dimple. And red dots or marks should take priority over any other markings that may appear on the tire. On all new Bridgestone tires, on only one of the sidewalls, there are yellow marks or dots. If there is a yellow mark, but no red mark, put the yellow mark next to the valve stem on the wheel. Tires may also have white marks or other colored marks along the outside. These marks, which relate to mold identifications, material codes, and other manufacturer identifications, can appear anywhere on the tire and are not used in mounting or balancing. 
So just ignore any colored marks on the tire other than the red or yellow ones. Remember, if the tire has red and yellow marks, use only the red mark and align it with the wheel's dimple or with the valve stem if the wheel has no dimple. If the tire has only a yellow mark, align the yellow mark with the valve stem of the wheel and disregard any other markings on the tire. The only exception is when you have rotated the tire 180 degrees to correct a non-concentric mount. To illustrate some of these possibilities, here again are examples you may encounter during typical tire mounting. Here you see the red dot matched to the dimple of a steel wheel. This is the preferred matching combination. The red dot matched to the valve stem of the steel wheel is appropriate in cases where there is no dimple. Here the red dot is matched to the valve stem of an aluminum wheel. Remember, the red dot takes priority and aluminum wheels, because they are machined, do not have dimples. For a tire which has no red dot, the yellow dot has been matched to the valve stem of a steel wheel. Here, a yellow dot has been matched to the valve stem of an aluminum wheel with no dimple. It's simple. Just follow the procedures shown on the Bridgestone wall chart. After mounting, further uniformity improvements on the vehicle may be obtained. On single tire applications, having the red mark on the tire, tighten the wheel nuts with the red mark at the 12 o'clock position. Gravity provides a small uniformity gain. On all dual tire applications, clock the adjacent tire and wheel assemblies so that the valves are approximately 180 degrees from each other. Earlier, we referred to the valve stem. The new tire that you're installing deserves a new valve stem or at least a new rubber grommet and a new valve core. Grommets deteriorate with age. They can get hard and brittle and crack. This will affect your seals. Make sure the rubber grommet and metal collar or nut are centered in the valve hole. Always finish tightening with a wrench and don't overlook the importance of installing a new valve core. The metal valve cap acts as the final seal for your tire wheel assembly. It is the air in the tire that carries the load, and therefore correct inflation pressure is critical. Always refer to the tire manufacturer's inflation charts for the correct cold inflation pressure for each tire size and application you mount. Set the air pressure with an accurate gauge. Routinely use the master gauge in your shop to confirm that your gauge is properly calibrated. Incorrect inflation pressure will affect casing life and cause irregular wear on tires and result in ride disturbance complaints from your customers. Here's a simple way to double check yourself. Just remember CLACK. C is for clean it, L is for lube it, A is for align it, and C is for check it. CLACK. Just CLACK it. Follow these helpful pointers in addition to the procedures and guidelines in your other training and you'll find that you'll achieve quality mounts the first time. You can take pride in a job well done. Make every effort to see that your tires are properly mounted and well inspected. Your customers will enjoy better service from their tires when they've been properly mounted and will all be rewarded with their appreciation and return business. And if you have any questions about truck tire care, mounting, or maintenance, contact Bridgestone or your Bridgestone representative. We'll be happy to help.